my name is Andre. This is my Twitter name. Uh, I work uh, at Zalando as a front-end developer, and I contribute to open source. I'm mostly notable by uh, my Gulp plugins, SVG Store, SVG Fallback, and PostCSS. Uh, so any website may face this problem of how to bundle and effectively deliver icons to the browser. Uh, we've been trying with CSS, sprites, icon fonts, but now it's time to consider something new. Uh, but first we have to define a feature set that we expect from such method. So, of course, we have to consider performance, not just in terms of payload or and amount of requests, but also uh, CPU usage is quite important, especially on mobile devices when uh, it may drain the battery of, of the device. Uh, of course, we would like to support all the different browsers. Uh, we have to support retina displays. Sometimes we do not have to forget about IE8 and Android 2.3, or old, old browsers, and at Zalando, sometimes we even have to support no JavaScript solution. <laughs> And then we also would like it to be easier to uh, add new icons, update the icons, and style them with CSS. Um, for this, I have considered this set of methods. Uh, here on the right side, I have two images. One is PNG, another one is SVG, as you can see them on, on Retina display. <laughs> uh, and I categorize these methods in two groups. First group can be used with either PNG of, or SVG, and, and the second one is uh, only vector-based. So everyone is probably is familiar with CSS sprites. So you define, you combine all the images into one sprite sheet, and then you change background position to offset such an image. Uh, but this method has its own drawbacks. First, if you try, if you want to use it with raster images such as PNG, uh, you have to create separate image uh, twice as big as the first one for the retina display. And but if you choose to create sprite out of SVG, then it has some performance issues. And, and uh, also, it is not possible to change the color with CSS. You have to bundle two uh, copies of the same image with different colors. Uh, and the second method that came after CSS Sprite is CSS with data URIs. And it was popularized with uh, Grampicon. So, they have this awesome website where you can drop SVGs and then it will create a CSS for you that bundles these images uh, by encoding them into data URI format. Uh, but base64 encoding increases the size of the images, so it increases the payload. And of course, you have to provide separate image for each color, because you cannot control the color in this way. And then the last one is that the data data URIs are really slow on mobile, because every inclusion of the image uh, through data URI actually hits uh, the cache of the browser, so it's quite slow. Uh, then came icon fonts, and it is a way to bundle your icons uh, into web font, and then you can use symbols from that font. Uh, the main drawback for me is that it is difficult to scale and position such icons, because you work with font size and line height, but not with the dim dimensions of your icons. So you are not working with width and height. 
uh, it's also a cumbersome build process. There are different font formats and it's kind of difficult to, to create this uh, web fonts, yeah. And the last one is inconsistent rendering in different browsers. So for example, you can have broken image in IE, then slightly bolder images in Firefox, so they look different. Um, and also they are monochrome, so you can set only one color for your web font with CSS. So uh, I propose method of combining SVG uh, with symbol tags. So it's quite simple. You create SVG with symbols, you give IDs to the, to the symbols, and you put your icons, icons. inside them. And then in, from your HTML, you simply refer to the particular symbol that you would like to use. So this method is fast enough to be used on mobile devices. It is five times slower than icon font, but it's fast enough. Uh, it has endless styling possibilities. So you can use CSS to change the style of SVG. You can set fill stroke, width height, and all the stuff. And it, also, it is easy to maintain because you only need to create this bundle with text editor. So is it good enough? <laughs> no, it has some drawbacks. And the first one is, of course, it's not supported in old browsers, such as IE8 and Android 2.3. And also you have to modify SVG in order to set fill from CSS. You have to remove fill attributes and then you set them on parent SVG element. So the symbol, con contents of the symbol will inherit this value. Uh, and it can't be used with external SVG because of IE. Uh, so you either have to polyfill this with SVG for everybody or you inline or load it with XML HTTP request and actually inline it into your page. So if you choose to go with the second uh, way, then uh, you have to consider some more points. So you have to visually hide uh, this combined SVG in, in order for gradients to work in Firefox. So visually hidden means uh, hiding it by not setting it to display known, but by setting it position absolute and, and then with clip, hide it with clip uh, property with CSS. Then also you have to inline it on top of body because it won't work in iOS. <laughs> and the last one is that you can't use this method uh, if you have base tag in HTML uh, because it uh, modifies the effect of uh, xlink href in Firefox. So it actually prepends URL from base tag to the value of x to the x link href value because it considers it to be relative URL, not not the URL on the page. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show how to load the image with XML HTTP request and embed it into the page. So you first to create the XML HTTP request. Then you set onload callback, and then you get contents of the response and append it, insert it into the top of body tag. And then you initiate the request, so simple. 
And yeah, and of course, we would like to IE to support external SVG to not having to load it with JavaScript. And uh, IE have created this website where they gather uh, all suggestions for the IE Edge, and you can vote for them to support this. Uh, then I have to, I, I would like to step into the tooling. Because creating such SVG bundle manually with text editor is a bit cumbersome. So uh, for this, I have created Gulp plugin that is called Gulp SVG Store uh, that you can use to bundle SVGs together. So it gets all the files, all the SVG files, and then it combines them and outputs only one file. So what are the features? So according to Gulp plugins, it should do only one thing and do it well. And it also plays well with other Gulp plugins. So you can rename the files before passing them into Gulp SVG store, or you can minify SVG or you can even modify SVG with Gulp Cheerio, which is jQuery, but in Node. And of course, it is tested and documented. Uh, I don't know if all of you have to support IE8 and Android 2.3, but unfortunately, I have to support them. <laughs> So for this, I, I suggest to use uh, CSS sprites, but in a clever way. <laughs> so first, I think that it's, it's fine to not provide full user experience to the users of these browsers, because they already expect experience to not be good. <laughs> Everything is slow for them. Uh, so just because in CSS Sprite you can't control color and size, so probably you should generate Sprite with limited colors for them. Maybe without any hover effects or just plain gray. <laughs> and such CSS Sprite can be generated with another plugin that I created uh, that consumes SVGs and outputs two files, which, which is PNG and CSS. So it produces CSS sprite from the same SVG sources. It's quite easy. So to implement the fallback, I first use JavaScript to test for SVG support. And then if SVG supported, I use XML HTTP request to load SVG and embed it into the page. Otherwise, I create link to CSS and put it into the head of the document, so it then loads fallback CSS. Uh, and if JavaScript is disabled, I simply put the same link to fallback CSS into no script tag. So browser will load fallback if JavaScript is not supported. And this is the HTML bit that I use for the sprite. So uh, if SVG is not supported, then the span tag acts as a CSS sprite. And this is the CSS. Uh, so you have to change the style of SVG to display block so it will hide all the empty space around it. Then you set fill to current color so all SVG sprites will inherit uh, the color of, of the text. And sometimes you need to send pointer events known if you use JavaScript, if you uh, add some delegated event listeners, this will prevent SVG from being a target of 
uh, this delegated event. And if there is no JavaScript, then I hide SVGs because I load the fallback anyway, so I won't end up when both of them are loaded on top of each other. <laughs> so let's do a recap. So we defined a feature set that we would like from our sprighting method. Then we compared various various sprighting methods and decided upon using combined SVG. And we introduced a tool to simplify our workflow and proposed fallback to make our solution bulletproof. Uh, so that's it. I've created blog post on our tech blog that explains how how to do this. And I also have uh, created a playground with various uh, sprite methods that build uh, different sprite methods out of SVGs. And this is the Twitter of my company where I work. So thank you. <laughs>